Okay, so I think the, the countries of the world, I think maybe we can divide it into four categories. Okay, we can divide it into the global north, the global south, the region, okay, uh, the regional power, the Middle East, and the Islamic world. Okay, so when we come to the global north, what we're seeing is that the EU and the US are taking the position that Israel has every right to defend itself, but as the UN reporter said uh, Francesca Albanese, Israel has a right to defend itself, but not uh, against by com committing genocide or against civilians. So that's something very important. But the position of the US is we're supporting the Israel. Israel has to eliminate Hamas. Um, but the, also the US and the EU are well aware that you need a political solution to this problem, that there is no military solution to the problem of Hamas or the Gaza Strip. So you need a political solution. What is tragic is that they're not pushing further for a ceasefire, and I think it's because they, Israel, U.S. at least wants to Israel to give more leverage to Israel. But at one point, a ceasefire is going to happen, and also because they're thinking of what is the solution the day after. Okay, the global South and the Muslim world are all for the ceasefire. For this is. Um, showing Western hypocrisy, the way they related to the Ukrainian, the war of the Russia against Ukraine, compared to the, the, what's happening to Israel, from Israel to the Palestinians. This hypocrisy has been pointed out, and their position has been to continue pushing for a two-state solution for Palestinian rights. And then you have the region, the Middle East region, which is very important in this conflict, because all in all, it seems that the region you have regional powers who are very concerned, like Egypt and Jordan, because of the borders, okay, on the, on the border of Israel, and they don't want a refugee crisis, which is what seems Israel to be doing, to want to push the Palestinians out of Gaza. Their position has been, again, to be supportive of the two-state solution. They could have put more leverage on the U.S. They could have been, um, the many Arab countries could have withdrawn their um, Israeli ambassador. They chose not to. Uh, what we see is an attempt to maintain a regional order, balance of power um, between the main power broker in the region, which is mainly Iran, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Egypt, balancing out Israel. So they are for Palestinian having to say solution. Um, the question is, will the solution be still available? after the amount of destruction that Israel has done, because Israel has also plainly said, Netanyahu has said, uh, there will be no PA in, the, in Gaza and no Palestinian state. So we're back to square one. The Palestinians are largely on their own. Uh, it's not the first time they've been on their own. They were on their own in 1982 when Israel tried to eliminate the PLO in Lebanon and seemed to have succeeded because it expelled it out of Lebanon in 1982, the PLO was kicked all the way down to Tunis. The Palestinian guerrillas were divided into various countries. But remember, 82, when people thought you eliminated the PLO, just like Israel now is trying to eliminate Hamas, okay? 10 years after that, they made peace with, Hamas, with the PLO. So Hamas will definitely be, will def be defeated militarily, but is not vanishing as a political power. And what's going to happen is something we have to wait and see. What we see is... Uh, the PA is on lost legitimacy uh, in the West Bank and Gaza. Hamas has much more legitimacy as a political power. It's a time of big turmoil uh, and incredible suffering. But I keep hopeful that with this, you can see some political opportunities once the uh, war stops, at least, because the war is going to drag for some years, but at least for now, we want it to stop and think of a political solution that is inclusive of everybody as equal, not prioritizing the right of one group over the other or the security of the Israelis over the security of Palestinians. Everybody needs to be secure. In this land from the river to the sea, that has 14 million people <laughs> in it, some with rights and some with without. Yeah. Well, there is some hope because the United States is, is waning in power and the global, you know, power structure is shifting. And so maybe they will poke through that edifice and we'll actually see justice in our lifetime. Let's let's just see. Depends on how long we live, I, I guess. Think 
No, I think you will, because also what's happening in the U.S. is very different. There's a dimension we did not talk about. The, the level of activism happening in the U.S., uh, the level, the U.S. administration, if you know something, Netanyahu is aware that there is no political, solu- no military solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. There needs to be a political solution. And I think the level of activism we saw, or mass mobilization on the streets, in the media, in academia, we're seeing much uh, stronger presence of uh, Palestinian voices, even if there's an attempt to silence it now with all this attack on anti-Semitism. But there is still, and there's a very important uh, Jewish activism, Jewish Voices for Peace, a new generation of Jewish people it's arguing Israel does not represent us, Israel doesn't defend us, and it is not in the interest of the U.S. to take a position which is does not uphold international law. So I think we have an opportunity. The question is, we are in a war and there will be forces and counter forces. But I think we need to push for international law and for what America stands for, which is basically the inalienable rights of everyone to live in freedom and security, no matter where they are. 